few years ago, we heard about the Bowern Lakes, a 116 kilometer canoe trip in central British Columbia connected by 12 lakes. We have zero canoe experience, but a great sense of adventure, so we thought we'd give it a whirl. We also wanted to purchase a canoe for the trip, but we didn't want to spend thousands of dollars. So we searched a local buy and sell, and as luck would have it, we found a canoe from the 70s, owned by the original family. It needed a little love and came with some limitations, as you'd expect an older canoe to have, but we thought it would be up for the challenge. In December, when registration opens for the Bowron Lake Canoe Circuit, we were lucky and managed to secure an eight night slot in mid-August. We hoped that that time would bring us good weather in an area known for its cold and wet climate. We definitely romanticized the idea of using our old canoe and the little portage wheels we bought off Amazon. But having never canoed before, we didn't know any better. Of course, things went a little sideways, as they always seem to with us. Our truck broke down on the way up, and those little wheels didn't hold up the way we wanted them to. With our 45-pound backpacks on and about 80 pounds of supplies in our already heavy canoe, it was definitely a lot more work than we thought it was going to be. But it made the trip all that much more fun. The learning, exploring, and adventure never disappoints us. Rephrase my question to you from this morning. What goobies are your favorite? <laughs> Mine. Where are we headed to? Bower and Lake. Well, we're stuck in a little bit of traffic, but it's good because some nice guy told us that our uh, canoe seat's flapping around, so. We had to take it off. Otherwise, if it fell, I would be sitting on the ground for eight days paddling. Uh, so yeah, so we had to take her off and then we're gonna have to get some bolts because it was pretty rusty. After seven hours into our nine hour drive to Bower and Lakes, we arrived in Quinell, a small town in central BC, to discover a broken front wheel bearing on our truck. This forced us to spend the night, however, we were extremely lucky enough to find a mechanic to help us fix it the following morning. This also gave Zach the opportunity to borrow some tools and fix the seat in Sunflower, our canoe. We're on our way again. Truck is fixed. Yeehaw! <laughs> Bower and Lakes, here we come. We had originally planned to spend a night in Wells, BC, exploring the historic areas surrounding Bower and Lakes before we started our canoe trip. The broken truck threw a wrench into that plan, but we were lucky enough to fix it fast enough and still get the opportunity to explore a bit of Wells and the old mining town of Barkerville, which was once the largest city north of San Francisco during the Gold Rush era. met up with our friends Matt and Aaron, two brothers who were joining us on the trip. Matthew, the golfer. Aaron, the lover. Day one, 6.39 in the morning. And little blueberry toes is still in bed. You were in bed a minute ago, too. Day one breakfast? Eat that banana. Just the single hand pop. Single hand pop? Yeah, well, ham and pineapple uh, pizza? Eggs. Eggs. <laughs> After breakfast, we headed off to the registration office to check in, watch the orientation video, and get our gear weighed. What's his official weight? Oh, well, I tried a couple other things. I think things. like 55 pounds. Yeah. Nice. Everything ah. pushed it over. Yeah, the brothers, the brothers are at 55. Sorry. 50. 50. Oh, we're at official 50 for the uh, Yin Yang twins. Yin Yang. <laughs> <laughs> While you can carry as much as you want on your back, canoeists on Bower and Lakes are allowed a maximum of 60 pounds of supplies, excluding paddles and life safety gear, in their canoe on the portage trails. We're starting. Hard to head out. Go. Day one. Day one. Half 
halfway through our first portage. Morale's at a low. Trying another new system, calling it the mush. We found we gotta try and keep the canoe level. It's the problem, because one side's too high, one side gets too low, hard to steer, and it's like we're pulling the weight as well as, or carrying the weight as well as pulling it, but I think we figured it out with the mush so far. So far, mush for the win. So we're just over the two kilometer mark and we've, we tweaked her. So this one's not the best because <laughs> this is you know, an hour and a half into an eight day trip. But we'll make it work. Aaron and Matt came back with their wheels to let us borrow them and help us get our canoe to the end of the portage since our wheels weren't looking like they were going to make it. Wheels take two because ours oh, bent. Yeah, yeah, those wheels are way better than ours. <laughs> they bounce over everything great. Zach didn't want to listen to me when I said we should keep the rental wheels because I read reviews on ours and they break really easily, but ours already bent, so they're probably not gonna make it the whole trip, but maybe they will. Otherwise, we're gonna do two canoes, one wheels. Let's see how she goes. First portage done, two and a half K, about two and a half K about an hour. Sweaty. These wheels. Much better. Bueno. Our wheels. These ones, no, no bueno. bueno. Ready for our first outing on the lake. one done about, about an hour and 40 minutes we're loaded up again portage portage second portage finished uh, it was about two and a half hours seven kilometers okay let's go well, I gotta take my boots off I'm getting in no, just walk through the water a little bit. It's gonna be over my ankle. Is that my garbage bag or yours? There you go. Well, I can do that, but I'm twisting all the food and getting my food from over. Lake one, second lake two, and this is where we are right now. Number eight. We're gonna try and go to 12. We're gonna try to go for 12 or somewhere in 14, 16 here. There's 17, but we're at eight right now. 15 has a cook uh, wood stove. to campsite number 11 Isaac Lake ponchoed up breakfast up man up little rainy last night she's putting on her poncho crystal clear water so I'm dropping the hook yeah. And then that little thing at the bottom here. Yeah, flick it. So just tell me when you think I should yeah. stop it. That's probably pretty good there. Now you want to try and make sure that the reel can spin without hitting your boat too. Yeah. How's our fishing rod doing? She's fishing.
Like a glove. A little kimchi for Aaron. You want, yeah. some meat? you want a piece of my meat? Oh, I want a little piece of Matt's meat. What kind of meat is this, Matt? Flammy. Oh, I love salami. Back to Sir Wolverine Bay. Well, did six kilometers in an hour and a half. Stop for our breakfast, actually. Rain's kind of subsided. Do you want this fishing rod off mine? Okay, I'm gonna pull one in for us then. She's raining. She's raining. Are you filling up your hat with water so you can drink it, Matt? Now oh, it's a little rainy. It's a wee bit rainy, eh? A wee bit. The breaky poo. A poo break? Breaky poo. Oh. <laughs> Spot 18. Last time we were here, it was like crazy piss rain. And it was locked. She's a floater. Campsite number 20, about 4 p.m. What do we do, 19K? 19K. Bed is set up. Bed is set up. Aaron's happy. I'm trying out our booties. We're like Nerf. Oh, look at the little booties. And what do we got, a smorgasbord? And a smorgasbord. Italian electrolytes. Oh yeah. Tal Pistachios, some almonds. Walnuts, gummy bears, and dried mangoes. Yum. Despite our failed efforts thus far to catch a fish, Aaron never got bored of casting an evening line. We always enjoyed the evening time spent on the beach as a group, resting, replenishing, and unwinding from the day's paddle while enjoying the peaceful and picturesque surroundings. Good morning. It's day three. Yeah, day three. Night two was last night. We woke up to rain, a lot of rain again in the middle of the night, and kept us awake, or kept me awake. Um, Zach's having to poop right now. We are 19 kilometers, I think it was, into our trip. Now we're going to get to the end of Isaac Lake today. And then we go down the Caribou River a bit. We have another portage tomorrow, first thing. Um, and then we're on to relaxing days, I think. We just had to push through this little bit. Um, but yeah, not a lot of sleep last night because of the rain. Morning. It's a little wet. Here's our tent. Here's us in the morning. Day three water bucket removal. There's a lot of water in this one. Just rained a little bit. That's a lot of water in the canoe. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord! Oh, I must have pissed last night. Oh, it did. Breakfast is served. Breakfast is served. <laughs> Matthew's excited. It's 10, almost 10 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. day three. We're loaded up. Oh. Looking, looking. The brothers are loaded up. Right the water is calm. Ooh, that is We're ready to carry on. We didn't see as much wildlife on the trip as typically expected, but we did witness a swimming squirrel who was bravely and single-handedly traversing Isaac Lake. Can't say we've ever seen that before. Day 
the three nights. A little thought. How many kilometers did we do today? Uh, like 20. Yeah, 21 kilometers today. At the end of Isaac Lake is the infamous chute on the Isaac River. The chute is a narrow section of water with standing waves. The intensity and difficulty of the chute varies from year to year and month to month depending on water levels. Since we were a little unsure about using shallow old sunflower, our canoe, we took turns in Aaron and Matt's so we could all try paddling it. While it looks pretty calm in our video, seeing it in real life made us worried that we might flip into the cold water. We all made it through though, and in the morning we decided to take this route out, even with our canoe, crossing the fast moving waters of the chute so that we could experience paddling along the Isaac River and take in the beautiful scenery. <laughs> that night at camp, we had the luxury of using a large cooking shelter to dry out our gear and swap stories with other canoeists. We also got some extra exercise, keeping the resident mice away from our supplies. Zach also got a chance to take part in a Bowron Lake tradition by carving a miniature wooden paddle. Canoeists carve simple to extravagant paddles along their journey and display their finished pieces outside of the shelters and cabins found along the circuit. Still no sunshine in the morning. Rained hard again last night, but we kept dry. Nemo 10 for the wind. Breakfast went a little fancy today. We got the... I put milk in it. Yeah, we got milk in it. And a little teas. <laughs> What's the weather like? Partially cloudy with a side of chai tea. 12 degrees. She's cold. Packing up. Packing up. Getting ready to hit the white water today. I guess we're going to go around it, right? This way? Yeah. Probably go in. Straight through. Yeah. We'll go, we'll go in and down and then around. The top of the Isaac River is an optional paddling route recommended only for experienced canoeists. We decided to take it rather than do the long portage with our broken wheels. We also wanted the challenge of the fast moving waters and scenery that came along with it. It was a great choice for us, but make sure to check water levels and be honest about your capability levels before attempting, as we did see canoe carnage along the way of souls whose fortunes weren't as good as ours. Yay team. Day three portage, they're off. Getting ready. We're almost set up. But little sunflower, she did so good in the rapids. You can see how these wheels are not bueno. It's heavy. Carrying like five times my body weight. <laughs> yeah. This is what we're going over. With little to no clearance and a really bum wheel. Once again, Aaron and Matt saved the day with their portage wheels. We were lucky enough to only have a couple close calls with canoe accidents. One being where the fast moving waters of the Isaac River caused Matt and Aaron to shoot the wrong way and us to collide into them, which actually ended up preventing them from flipping over. Well, that's the closest I've ever been. Not yeah. After portaging around Isaac Falls, we ended up on the crystal clear waters of McCleary Lake. We decided to stop at old Freddie Baker's Trappin Cabin for a snack. There are a number of these historic cabins spread throughout the circuit, available for canoeists to rest in or spend the night. One of our team members. Paddling down the Caribou River, Zach and I had our close call with the unpredictable current and a fallen tree. What do we got? More rain. More rain. Day four, and it's still raining. It's still raining! <laughs> At Campsite 34, we were lucky enough to have the newly finished cooking shelter all to ourselves. We were able to get a fire going in the cooking stove, dry our gear out, and warm ourselves up. We had a resident chipmunk who was not shy of stopping by and saying hi, 
and Matt managed to get in some golf practice while Zach and I took a dip in the freezing cold lake. That evening, the weather cleared up and we got some of the best views of the surrounding Caribou Mountains. Clouds look really cool. Who the light looks there in here? Day. Who even knows anymore? Best. Day. Yeah. Friday. It Friday. is Friday. Yes. Day five. Ooh, Guess what the weather forecast <laughs> is? Rain. We're gonna have to get out. So far, yeah. rain. We're gonna have to get out. Yeah, but it's okay. getting brighter though. It's getting brighter. It is. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a lovely day. Lovely day. Camp We're heading to Sandy Lake. Yeah. Campsite. What are we at? Campsite. Thirty. Four. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Hasta la vista. Thirty-four. Drop. Snap drop. Campsite 36. Yeah. I'll pour yes. it. I have cups and stuff. Yay! Campsite 38. Yay. Campsite number five. Cinco. Cinco. About another 13 kilometers today. Took us a couple of hours, three hours probably. No, less than that. I thought it was only two. Oh, two and a half. It's a nice little spot though. We're set up for the rain. Most wildlife we've seen. Little frogs. Who's that little frog guy? Morning of day six. Huh? Still no sunshine. We're screwing this sandy lake with the cold lake and the mosquitoes the size of birds. We're headed to the sunshine and to Uma Lake today. There's blue sky. Blue skies are coming. Aaron's pondering life. Another word to the wise. The mouse is like everything. Chewed through our dirty laundry. I, we usually leave the laundry outside because not enough room in the bear cache. And this morning, woke up and the, the mouse was chewed through my dirty laundry. The mouse is like the smell of Zach's dirty underwear. I think it's my dirty socks, not my dirty underwear. Mm, I think it's your dirty underwear. Yeah. Enough. Morning tea. Day six, camp set up. And our good old friend, Mr. Rain, has come by as usual. Day six wouldn't be the same without a little rain and some hair. But we got a tarp set up. That afternoon, the rain cleared up and we paddled across Una Lake to hike in and see the 24 meter high Caribou Falls. Wild blueberries are ripe and ready this time of the year and there were plenty along the trail. We ate them until we were full. Hopefully, we left enough for the bears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two blueberries. That night was clear and we were able to enjoy more of the Perseid meteor shower that serendipitously was happening during this trip. Day seven coffee? Tea. Tea. What have we having? Beer and tea. Bagel spice. And some mustache. Yeah. Morning day seven. It's finally sunny. We didn't wake up to any rain. Pretty good. Morning swim's done. Tea's on. Let's get at it. Headed to our last portage. I don't know how. So we came to the beaver dam. 
Do a little pulling to get around her. No, I wouldn't. Yeah. Pulling her through the beaver dam. The princess doesn't get her toes wet. <laughs> yeah. Got to get through this ankle deep. We'll get through it. Mush, mush. But we got us all through. Oh, that is deep there. Yeah. Right? Day seven, Sunday. <laughs> Grabbed my flip -flop Little beaver dam fun. Our last main portage. Let's see how we do. Old sunflowers tied down as best you can. We got one wheel left. One wheel. Yeah. We should just roll it on that. <laughs> How did we do on our last main portage? Uh, we made it, actually, with a little fixer to our wheels and centering them evenly on the canoe and not having as much weight. Matthew and the brother are uh, they're trying to catch it, so we get a good spot. That afternoon, Aaron finally hit the jackpot with the fishing hole, pulling in lots of smaller catch and release until he finally landed a big one that we brought back to camp and fried up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Night seven turned out to be our last night together as a group as we were finishing faster than anticipated. We ate dinner on the sandbar of Camp 45 as we watched the sun dip behind the mountains. The next morning, we completed the circuit paddling out to Bowron Lake. Matt and Aaron headed home and Zach and I decided to spend one more night together under the stars. Last morning on the lake. We spent our last night in a sacred spot on oh, yeah. the Bowery. Yeah. Paddle in for another hour. Yep. And that's our trip. That's our trip. Eight days, 130K. Eight nights. Eight nights, nine days. Yeah, crazy. With little old sunflower. She did good. And the open wheel. Made it. Gimme uh, snaps. Done. Yeah, it's a good trip. Great trip.